Let me tell you about the flight of the Khazar warriors out of northern Turkey in 500 AD. They were a despicable bunch. You could go to the king of the Khazars and rent an army from him, an army of 40 or 50,000 men. But it didn't matter what kind of a deal you struck with their monarch. He wasn't called a king. He was called a shagan. Once the battle was done, they rape and pillage. Doesn't matter what kind of agreement you had with the king. That's the way it ended up. And so as a consequence, people in the area garnered a great deal of animosity for these Khazar warriors. And in 500 AD, they were driven out. And as they came down south out of uh, Turkey, some fled to the west into Romania and Hungary and became the gypsies. The rest followed their monarch, the Chagan, up into the steppes of Russia uh, and north of there to the uh, Caucasus Mountains. And as they settled in there, they relatively, well, they quite easily enslaved the relatively peaceful agrarian Slavic folks that were indigenous to the area. Then they came under pressure to take sides in a growing contention around them. Coming down from the north was Eastern Orthodox Christianity, and coming up from the south was Islam. And they knew that if they succumbed to pressure from either of those to join their organization and embrace their philosophy, it would surely offend the other. If Palestinians really wanted peace and freedom, they would have accepted statehood the five times Israel offered it to them. Why should they? Because it's very generous of Israel to offer that to them. So if a burglar came into your home and then said it was his, and then was like, you know what, never mind, do you want half of it? Would you say that he was being very generous? That's not nearly the same thing. Israel is giving them like 80% of the land. You know, that was like mostly desert and Israel kept most of the fertile land for themselves. Whatever, it's their land anyways. They can do what they want. It's not. They're indigenous to the land. I want me to believe that the Jewish people in Israel, which many of them are of European descent for generations upon generations, are, are indigenous to that land. Yes, exactly. God gave them that land. Even in that story, there were already people there. And you know who's related to those people? Palestinians. So you say Israel doesn't have the right to exist? So you're, so you're anti-Semitic, you hate Jewish people. I'm saying colonization is bad, always. By that logic, America shouldn't exist either. Yes, exactly. With that being said, I must add that I do not have a dog in this fight. I am not going for neither side. And with that being said, that land doesn't belong to neither. The children of Israel was driven out of that land, okay? So let's just keep going. And so what they did was a politically expedient maneuver. He called in all the religious leaders of the area, and he got their input. And after the input, he announced for me and my people, we're talking about 20 million people and about 4,000 nobility, for me and my people, we choose to become Jews. Now, this was not a heartfelt conversion. This was not something that was deep in their breasts that they felt they needed to uh, make a conversion because they thought that was the proper way to serve the creator. This was something that was done as a political expediency. And in the course of studying about their new religion, and you do have to study it even if you're only going to charade, it is absolutely necessary to study about it so that you can fake it. And in the course of doing so, they came across a character with whom they could truly identify. It was Lucifer, the morning light that fell from grace and became Satan, the adversary. And they formed an inner circle within Judaism dedicated to the forces of evil. Let's define terms. What is a Jew? If you look back in your Old Testament, your Bible, there was 12 Hebrew tribes. The 10 northern tribes were called the House of Israel. The two southern tribes were called Benjamin and Judah, 
more properly pronounced Yuda, because we didn't get the harder sound to the J until about 200 years ago. Until the year 1524, there was no letter J in the alphabet. The letter J was originally the same letter as I. The father of the letter J is Gian Giorgio Tresino, an Italian author and grammarian who lived from 1478 to 1550. Now, if you do the math on it, it's 2023. The J was invented in 1524. That's 499, about 499 years ago. That's about how long you so-called blacks been in slavery, right? Okay. So this is what I would call real Jews people from the tribe of Judah. And when we start talking about the New World Order, we are not talking about these people at all. We're talking about these Khazar warriors that only pretended to embrace Judaism. And so today, we find that about 92% of the people who claim to be Jews really aren't. They don't have a drop of Semitic blood in their veins. 2% of the people who claim to be Jews really are what? 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 What the fuck? What? 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 They are Khazar warriors with a new bent on life. Genesis 4 and 11 through 12. And now art thou cursed from the earth? which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And you know, so this is the so-called white man. They run all over the earth. They steal lands. They disguise themselves. They hide themselves. They steal identities because that's what fugitive and vagabonds do. They hide themselves. Well, really, they really are from the Caucasus Mountains, you know, Caucasians, Caucasus Mountains, the Ashkenazis. This is their history. Khazars. And a goal to conquer, to rape, and to pillage. And that philosophy has come down over time, and we see how effectively they have implemented it throughout history. As to the origin of the present Jews in Palestine, he states that those Jews derived from Eastern Europe, and many, many of the Jews that today live in the reconstituted state of Israel come from Eastern Europe are not descendants of the Judeans or the lost tribes of Israel, but rather descendants of the Khazars. Who are they? They were a nation most people do not even know of. He writes, the so-called self-styled Jews in Eastern Europe in modern history cannot legitimately point to a single ancient ancestor who ever set even a foot on the soil of Palestine in the era of Bible history. Research also revealed that the so-called or self-styled Jews in Eastern Europe were never Semites, are not Semites now, nor can they ever be regarded as Semites at any future time by any stretch of the imagination. What secret mysterious power has been able for countless generations to keep the origin and the history of the Khazars and the Khazar kingdom out of the history textbooks? Did you ever learn about it at school? I never learned about it. And out of classroom courses in history throughout the world, the origin and the history of Khazars and the Khazar kingdom are certainly incontestable historical facts. You have to do some cross-checking. Even the Jewish encyclopedia is quite explicit about it. Now, when they pretended to embrace Judaism, they drew upon the real Jews for some education. And they used the Hebrew alphabet as phonics to codify their Khazar language. And so now we look at that language called Yiddish or Zhidish and find that it is not Hebrew. It only appears to be. Now these people have 
run into some trouble over time. In 965 AD, they were overrun by the Varganians, which was Swedish, Swedish ruled Slavic people. Varganian is the Russian word for Vikings. And they were militarily defeated, which curbed their expansionist philosophy for some time. And then in 1140, they were literally overrun by the Mongols for uh, Kublai Khan and Genghis Khan. And they were driven down into Eastern Europe. Their monarch, the king, or Chagan as he was called, fled to um, Spain and Portugal. Now, because these folks were a, a darker uh, skin people with black hair and brown eyes, it was easier for them to fit in with the folks of Spain and Portugal and Italy and Sicily than they could other places where they stood out and looked markedly different. And they took a great deal of control, in, especially in Spain in Portugal, so much so that they were discovered in conspiracy because they worked together to get themselves, one of them, into a position of authority where that person can work in tandem with others to get more of their people in the authority and positions of power and working it up to where they're running the show and milking everybody else. Shalom on family. So that is basically a synopsis very brief synopsis of the history of the Khazars we are like barely scratching the surface but it's enough to prove they stole our identity and enough to show that they are in fact not the true or original Jews that the Bible speaks of but they have stolen our identity and they are the synagogues of Satan, which the Bible refers them to. So all is not lost, fam. They stole our identity. They pushed this, this lie in the earth. They gave us a false God to worship. They changed his image. They changed his name. They changed our name. They stole our original language. They took our alphabet and created a fake Yiddish language for them to match their fake identity that they stole from us so everything was a lie but as i always say we are literally living in a generation of knowledge and is no reason for anybody to be ignorant about anything anymore the truth is coming out the cat is out the bag the biggest lie that has been pushed and propagated throughout the earth is exposed them are not the true jews living over there in israel right now and there will not be peace over in Israel because the original people that was that came from that land is not there. We right. Let's see if we can get a little bit more proof on that. Let's see. Go to my images. See if I can find it. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. I should be able to find it. So lucky for right, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go back. Okay. There's more proof. Right. The Ish are not Jews. Most say that they are not. Right. The people do not like to admit it, but their God, lowercase g, is Lucifer, right? And we are his chosen people. Now, the Lucifer in this in this chant in this uh happenstance are the elite Illuminati of the individuals who think that they're illuminated or enlightened with the truth that the Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are the Israelites to hide that fact from them and to use them and to drain them from of all of their spiritual energy and change their their righteous energy into unrighteous energy okay thereby the lord would destroy them all by default and give the luciferian edomites the ungodly back the birthright which their ancestor esau edom sold 
to his younger brother Jacob for one morsel of meat. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, lest any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For as ye know how that afterward, when he would, when he would have inherited the blessing, when he would have inherited the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven, right? He was rejected by whom? The Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, who looks at him as a profane person. Profane means unclean or outside of the temple. The temple of the Most High or the living embodiment of the Most High on earth are the Israelites. The living embodiment of satanic power on earth, the ungodly, the Luciferians, are the Edomites. Don't get me wrong, they're both Hebrews. One is a Hebrew Israelite, the other is a Hebrew Edomite. Hated by the Most High, who created the heavens, the earth, the sea, all that is therein, and the foundation of water. It tells you in, in, in Romans chapter, as a matter of fact, let me just get it. <laughs> let, me, let me get it. Let me just get it. Okay. Let me get it. Okay. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. All right? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High Yahweh? Yahweh forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of power that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, right? Because like it says in the same, it says the same thing right here in Genesis chapter 27 verses 39 through 41 that Isaac gave Esau Edom his father or his father Isaac gave Esau Edom the fatness of the earth the dew of heaven from above and to live by the sword and when he has the dominion he would break his brother's yoke from off his neck that happened under King Solomon when he had started to go against the Lord and put up strange gods and idols and following in behind his wives as opposed to following in behind the precepts of the Lord uh, a child of the Edomites Ben Hadad was raised up by God to come against Solomon Ben Hadad was an Edomite okay anyway um, where was I okay for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Okay. So the Most High does whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, to whomever he wants to do it, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> okay. And these Edomites, they hate that. They really... Never pay for Wi-Fi again. Okay. Right. I'm just sorry, people. Okay, I'm trying to do the, you know, this this what happens when you got commercials. Anyway, Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, right? We are poor and destitute, but we will return and build the desolate places. They were impoverished in the bottomless pit when they were driven by the Mongols into South Russia into the European nations. During that time, those lands were, had been decimated by the bubonic plague, the black plague, and typhoid Mary. Those lands were already ruled over Scotland, Ireland, Sweden, Amsterdam, all of that by so-called melanated, tawny, skinned, brown, melanated people. Okay, the so-called Vikings were melanated people. Okay, they were honestly. Okay, Esau Edom when they came up to the bottomless pit when they during the Renaissance period, the rebirth of the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites, as it is written in the in the book uh, by William Beeston. Okay, they stopped being impoverished. They took over our castles. They took our own castle name. They took over our gold, our weapons, our armory. 
and started the Renaissance period and whitewashed history. From that point on, the entire world wandered after these bestial, animalistic, bestial, ungodly, warlike people, the Edomites. It's that simple. But we will return and build the desolate places. During the Renaissance period, they rebuilt Rome. Okay? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. They're at the top um, and the pinnacle of their rulership right now. They have nuclear weapons. They can bring the, the power of the sun and the power of their in the palm of their hand and bring it down to the surface of the earth. Right? The heat and power of the sun on the surface of the earth. They brought that. They did that. That is a biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation. Uh, I think it's 13, I think. Right? They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness. Okay? So that's how these people are called the wicked. Name that by the Lord of hosts, saith, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Indignation is righteous anger and hatred forever. He will have mercy on whom he have mercy, and whom he will he hearteneth. Okay? It's that simple. He made and brought these devils up from the bottomless pit, impoverishment, the Renaissance period, rebuilt Rome all over again. Okay, with better technology, but all of the ideology, all of the um, the government system, everything is the same. They had the patricians and the plebeians. Now they have the republicans and the democrats. Nothing's changed. They had a, a Caesar back then. Now they have a president. Nothing's changed. They had a House of Representatives and a Senate back then. They had a House, a Senate, and a House of Representatives. Now, what's changed? Nothing. Like it says in, um, hold on, let me get it. What's the name of it? Uh, I think it's in Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 55 and 19. Right? There it is. Power shall afflict, shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old Selah, because they're proud. They, 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 they brag about what they've done to the peoples of the earth right? Even he that abideth of old, he shall hear, right? Because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not Yahweh. They can't change. Everybody in the world is looking for these devils to change from a natural, bestial, bloodthirsty, warlike people into a peaceable nation. They can't, right? They have no changes. He had, verse 20, Psalms 55 and 20, he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. Who did he do that to? The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 16 says that woe unto him that, that giveth his neighbor drink that he may look upon his nakedness. Right? Who gave the indigenous population of people here in America when they got here strong drink? Who promised them covenant after covenant after covenant after peace treaty, after peace treaty, after peace treaty, and broke them all and took all of their land, put all of them on reservations, open air prison camps, okay? Okay? And shut the power off and on and the water off and on at will whenever they want to start a fight. Knowing that the people that they have in the enthrall can't fight back. They have no standing army. They can't do anything about it. They're surrounded by armies. Is, are these people, do not they represent the city of Jerusalem? A people near unto the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And they're surrounded by armies all the time. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the so-called police forces, the Oppenheimers, right? He had broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, he, but war was in his heart. Okay. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay? Broken covenants, right? So, like I said before, let's get back over here to uh, what I was looking for earlier. If I can find it. I'm trying to find it. Okay, hold on. It's in here somewhere. I know, okay, here's one. The subvertus, subversive ish 
writer Moritz Steinsnyder invented the term blah blah, as you can see, in 1860. The term is used to silence those that dare expose ish crimes, such as war crimes, uh, which is violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention. Is it? Are they not blowing up hospitals full of women and children trying to find one person? What the fuck? Okay, come on, man. Really? That's what they're doing. It's all over the world. Everybody's sick of these devils. Okay? And this is, uh, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. And this is part of their building blocks. Technocracy, the government or control of society or industry by an elite or of technical experts Failure in the world war on poverty discredited technocracy, right? <laughs> okay, so they're coming up again with, as you guessed it, technocracy. Okay, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, through technocracy to receive an M-A-R-K on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, that no man may participate in a cashless society, based on central bank digital currency to participate whether to buy food or water except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let the person who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man that number is 666 all praises to the oh, most high Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai Hamashiach Shalom